So we're here at BM Injection to talk with Mark about injection moulding and the processes. So Mark, let's start off with what are all the bags for? So we take materials on a, a daily or, or throughout the day from our main store. We bring them down to the shop floor. So these are the materials we're using to process during today, tomorrow for the current jobs that are running in the presses. Once you've got the material, what do you do with it? So we have uh, 22 injection molding machines on site. Material, uh, some materials need drying, some you can process straight away. Most of the engineering materials that we we use require drying, so material dries, um, mold tools in the tool, molten polymer gets injected by a hydraulic screw into the press under a lock. This particular press is 50 tonnes, so the lock pressure this tool requires is 50 tonnes. Up to a 30 second cycle, part comes out. This is a what we call a semi-automatic job where the operator is loading an insert and unscrewing an insert. Because it's a low volume uh, job, you don't have to fully automate it because it's not worth it because we're molding, say, a batch of 500, a batch of 1,000. So what sort of quantities do you do? Because obviously you've got quite a lot of machines here. Yeah, so volumes range from um, conceptual 100 shots, 50 shots, all the way up to some jobs we run millions of parts a week. It really depends on the order book at, the, at any one time. But what we also do here, we do a mixture. We do a mixture of thermoplastic moulding and thermoset moulding. So on this site we've got, this is a thermoset machine. Um, these, these machines currently here are thermoplastic, but we do everything on site for those. So, can we just, as we're walking through, have you got any parts we can just have a quick look at? Yeah, of course we can. So this particular part is running on a two impression tool. Um, this is a fully automated part for a cosmetic cream plunger. Um, again, you can see currently we're running a batch of 206,000. We're 188,000 into the run. Uh, we've got 18,000 left to do. So really, quantity is just what you do then? Yes. So as we're moving down, where are we actually heading to next? So we're heading round to the second part of our, our mould shop where we do smaller moulds, but we're also heading towards the tool room area as well. So can you tell me a bit about <laughs> BM Injection? Yeah, so BM Injection, uh, we work with customers to take their initial concepts through um, investigative stage, uh, prototyping, full production and then delivery to their end user or to their, their factory for on processes. So we cope with, with everything. We're, I hate the word one-stop shop, but effectively we try and cater for everything that the customer wants to get it from design stage through to supply. Well, I think the first thing people need to realise about walking into this bit is the heat just coming down the stairs. Yes. It seems to have gone from Antarctica <laughs> to Barbados in yeah, here. Yeah, so we're, we're into the uh, two reasons. We've got a closed ceiling in this area, but we've got lots of machines running at faster cycles. So in this area of the, of the mould shop, we've got 16, 32 cavity tools running, um, and yeah, it, it pumps the heat out. So. This is actually doing 16 parts at once. Could, you couldn't machine that quicker? You couldn't, no. I mean, this particular tool runs at a, a, a 12 to 13 second cycle, and um, there's no way you could 3D print or <laughs> machine things in that, that sort of time. Um, now, I just want to move on to this. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I talked earlier, we do thermoplastic and thermoset. Um, th th this is a thermoset part, so the difference between this and a thermoplastic is we have a powder phenolic which goes into the barrel, it stays at around 80 degrees until it hits the tool. The tool is at 170 degrees and this actually cures, so it goes from a, a powder to a viscous to a um, curing process within the mould. And again, the difference is that it's like, these are like your baker lights, these are for heavy contact to switch gears. These are for where injection moulding polymers are either too expensive to use or can't handle the heat requirements for the UL that this switch goes into. And what I find really interesting about this is that's actually turned into like water before it's finished. Yeah, so the process literally goes from powder to a, a water. So you can't, you can't mould this process without creating flash. 
And then once you create the flash, we have to then have a special piece of machinery. Which we're actually going to go to next, aren't we? We're going to go to next that actually cleans this for the end user, yeah. So there's not even any... That doesn't even take any human intervention to actually clean that off either. No. You've got a machine for that as we well. We have a machine for this so as well. So where are we going? We'll walk round to this way. Yeah. So, and there's someone here, there's someone sat here checking every single part. So they're not checking, they're, they're, they're sort of checking initial, we, we go through many quality stages from, from this pre-inspection to the final shelf inspection. But what we're really keen on in this part is the parts come off, off the, the bulk deflasher. So this machine here will fire nylon beads, like a shot peening machine, but it will fire them at a lighter intensity to deburr the parts. So what we're checking for is that the customer's going to receive these parts with no media, no nylon beads, so that the production line that these go onto is very clean for the switch gear, so we have to make sure that everything's clean for them. So essentially, when the customer gets the part off you, it's ready to go. It's ready to Straight go. Straight on the machine. Yeah. So this is some more injection molding, and now we're heading into a, a, a different section of your shop, which no one will have seen before. So, yeah, so... We, we, we go into the tool room now and one of our, the things we're really proud about is not only do we, we manufacture the tools in the UK, but we mould in the UK, but it's very important for us that we're in control of the whole process. So we've invested heavily with NCMT and various people over the years to make sure that our tool room facility gives us every option to create tools that people require. So you've got some great machines in here. So you've got, you've got your manuals, yep. you've got your three axis Herco, but yep. well, then you've got something around the corner which is yeah we have so is, a, is, is a real beauty of a machine and am i right in saying this was actually from ncmt as well this is an ncmt machine this is a uh, full five axis um makino d200z so this will typically for us do um, most of our finishing work most of our work albeit this is aluminium is tool steels but this gives us the option 30,000 RPM, we can do positional four plus one, or we can do full five axis machining on it. Oh, what a great machine that is. Yeah. But there's something else I want to mention, cause I don't know if you can hear this, but behind me <laughs> is something I've, I've, I've never actually seen before. So can we see what this machine's actually doing behind us? We certainly can. Just that, just that noise. And I'm gonna try and use the mic here. I don't know if this will work. So yeah, this is the uh, Makino EDA Free. This is the heat version, so it has the um, extra capability of the uh, Z jump speed and the uh, the way that the circuits of the machine controls the spark gap. Um, we also have the Z accuracy package on here, which has got its own individual chiller on the Z, so that we can hold micron tolerances in the Z as well as the X and Y. We're going to move in to the last section of our tour, and this yep. is. Your newest investment? This is our Makino Wire EDM U32J. Again, we stuck with NCMT and Makino uh, based on two reasons. The controller Hyper I was a follow on from our, our EDM machine. And so um, that gave the user some confidence that in setting up was, was quite similar. So, what we're going to try and do as we, as we buy more machines and go and build to the future is to and make sure the controllers are, are synergies so that we're not having to cross train too much. And what I like about this is you double screen because you don't normally see double screen on a, wi no. on a wire EDM. But mostly you don't normally see a double screen on, on many machines. It's really. something that I'm a, a big advocate for. Advocate for. Um, the, the user has, we have currently on here, we have Hypermillant, which has an, an embedded OptiCan license. So we use the HyperCADS software. So if they're a part needs a bit more design work on it for him to be able to wire cut, i.e. filling holes in, making the structure uh, a, a solid. We, we, can then, we can then do that all at the, at the machine, process it and run it. The, the, the user is not saying, can you do this to me? Can you, you know, can you help me? It's all in his control. Now, just before we finish, yeah. I'd just like to talk about some of the, the work you've got here because it yeah. just looks, it looks unreal. Yeah. So, just look at that, how... So effectively, we can look at this and we can, we can track every machine in the tool room. All right. So, so we can <laughs> say the billet came in as a raw stock and it was blocked up on the XYZ. The billet, the runner was pre-machined in before hardening on the Herco. The block <laughs> came back from hardening and it was ground on the Jones and Shipman. It was then finished machined on the five axis for the runners and then EDM'd and wire EDM'd at the same time. So this block has gone through 
seven, probably seven procedures and seven machines in the tool room. So that's amazing that you can actually tell exactly what machine it's been through. Yep. And that little part you've got, now you couldn't actually mill that. You couldn't do that without a, an EDM, could you? No, so we've got, we've got a 0.8 by four mil blade ejector that we first have to rapid hole drill the hole through burn the blade hole to a H7 tolerance. So everything we do is has a limit and a fit and a tolerance. And then we wire cut the outside form. This aperture again is on a, a G6, a H7 fit. So everything we do has to slide together and be removable. Sorry, I'm getting it the wrong way around. That's my fault. And then- But just look at that. Look at the fit on that. And it in. just fits perfectly. Yeah. So Mark, amazing shop some amazing machines yeah and can i just say a big thank you for letting us no, have welcome. a wander around it's been great to have you all in it's, uh... so yeah thank you thank you very much <laughs>